Elizabeth Revol, a French climber, and her partner, Tomek Makievich, found themselves in a harrowing situation on Nanga Parbat, also known as the Killer Mountain, due to its high fatality rate. Even during the summer months, the mountain posed a formidable challenge with unstable glaciers, avalanches, and raging storms. Many climbers have died attempting to conquer Nanga Parbat. Polish French duo Tomek Makievich and Elizabeth Rivol chose the treacherous Kinshofa route, unaware of its impact on their lives. Tomek, a Polish high altitude climber, found solace in climbing after battling addiction and depression. Inspired by the challenge, he left drugs behind and pursued mountaineering across Europe and Asia. Tomek, nicknamed Chopkins, was captivated by Nanga Parbat, the dangerous ninth highest peak in the world. His dream was to be the first to conquer it in winter. Despite previous failures and tragedies, he continued his attempts. During an expedition, he met Elizabeth Rivol, a skilled French climber known for her speed and versatility. They shared a passion for remote and challenging mountains and envisioned conquering Nanga Parbat without oxygen or fixed ropes in a fast, lightweight manner. In their quest to conquer Nanga Parbat in winter, Tomek and Elizabeth faced numerous challenges, attempting the climb together on four occasions. Despite reaching 7,800 metres, they were unable to reach the summit. In 2018, their seventh attempt, they arrived in Pakistan and spent time acclimatising and preparing with minimalistic supplies. They chose the demanding Kinshofa route, known for its steepness, technical requirements and risks of avalanches and harsh weather. On January 20th at 4am, Elizabeth and Tomek set off from base camp. Determined and unburdened by heavy gear, they rapidly ascended, covering over 1,000 metres in altitude each day. Along the way, they established three camps, Camp 1 at 4,800 metres, Camp 2 at 6,100 metres, and Camp 3 at 7,200 metres. Enduring strong winds, frigid temperatures and deep snow, they both persevered, braving the challenges posed by the infamous Killer Mountain. On the afternoon of January 24th, they reached Camp 3. After a few hours of rest, they made the daring decision to attempt the summit that evening. At 9pm, carrying only essential supplies such as food, water and down jackets, they embarked on the final push. Guided by their headlamps and relying on their intuition and instincts, they climbed throughout the night. Their relentless determination and skill propelled them forward, and on January 25th, Elizabeth and Tomek achieved their goal, reaching the summit of Nanga Parbat. Their triumph, however, marked the beginning of a series of challenges during their descent. They encountered treacherous weather. Tomek's health began to deteriorate rapidly. Elizabeth grew increasingly concerned as Tomek revealed his inability to see, uttering the alarming words, I can't see you. I can't see anything. It was clear to Elizabeth that Tomek was experiencing acute mountain sickness, which can be a potentially fatal condition. With time running out, Elizabeth knew they had to descend to lower altitude, where Tomek could receive more oxygen. Since they were climbing without supplemental oxygen tanks, they faced a critical situation. As they began their descent from the summit, Tomek's pace slowed to almost a crawl. He could barely move and Elizabeth realised that his life was hanging by a thread. Determined to save him, she supported his weight, wrapping his arm around her shoulder. Together they descended, slow step by painstaking step, increasing Tomek's chances of survival. By the time they descended to an altitude just below the treacherous death zone at 7,900 metres, Tomek's condition had deteriorated further. He was struggling to breathe, and when his face mask slipped off, Elizabeth witnessed blood streaming from his mouth. His nose had turned white with frostbite. With the situation growing absolutely dire, Elizabeth knew that swift action was necessary. Around 11pm, Elizabeth used her in-reach satellite device to send a desperate message to two individuals, her husband, Jean-Christophe Revol, and Ludwig Joni, a friend overseeing the logistics of their expedition from France. 
She pleaded for helicopters to be sent for their rescue, stressing the urgency of Tomek's condition. Frostbite had set in, Tomek's vision had diminished to almost complete darkness. However, finding helicopters for a mountaineering rescue in Pakistan proved to be quite a challenge. Sky Aviation, spelt S-K-A-I, was the only authorised company for such an operation, but they required a deposit before initiating a rescue mission. Elizabeth and Tomek had not made any prior arrangements with Sky Aviation. In a race against time, a GoFundMe page was created to raise funds for their rescue. Eventually, the Polish and French embassies provided over $80,000 to cover the upfront costs. Yet another hurdle remained to reach the stranded climbers. Helicopters to be used for the rescue operation had a maximum landing height of 5,000 metres, while Elizabeth and Tomek were trapped at an altitude of approximately 7,200 metres. Nevertheless, the mountaineering community came together in a display of heroism and solidarity. A highly skilled team of Polish climbers, Denis Upko and Adam Biski, who were nearby attempting to climb K2, volunteered for the rescue mission upon learning about the very dire position of their fellow climbers on Nanga Parbat. Biski, deeply concerned upon hearing of Elizabeth and Tomek's predicament, admired Elizabeth's strength and toughness. Upko, an experienced climber at Base Camp K2, felt compelled to utilize his expertise in high-altitude rescue to help his friends. Joined by a group of Pakistani climbers, they formed the only available rescue team in the vicinity. On January 27th, the rescue operation commenced. Despite the risks involved, the Polish team and their Pakistani counterparts embarked on the perilous journey up the Kinshofa route to reach the stranded climbers. Simultaneously, Elizabeth had made the difficult decision to descend alone, realizing that it was faster and safer for a solo climber. Biski and Abko tackled the mountain with remarkable speed, despite facing temperatures as low as minus 60 degrees Celsius. Their previous expedition to K2 had provided them with acclimatization and endurance necessary for the arduous task at hand. Carrying only essential gear, they ascended quickly through the treacherous terrain. Their efforts paid off when Rubo, one of the rescuers, heard Elizabeth's faint voice in the darkness. He shouted to Bisky, Adam, I can hear her. Soon after, Rubo brought Elizabeth to a narrow ridge where Bisky anxiously awaited. Overwhelmed with emotion, Bisky recalled, I was so happy, almost crying that we'd found her. Elizabeth was in a relatively stable condition, considering the ordeal she had endured. Elizabeth recounted her descent via the Kinshofa route and hallucinations caused by extreme altitude. Rescuers provided her with warmth, medication and support during their descent. They made the difficult decision to prioritize Elizabeth's rescue leaving Tomek behind. Elizabeth received care and was airlifted to a hospital. Sometime after her Nanga Parbat tragedy and despite challenges, she continued climbing, conquering Mount Everest and Lhotse, honoring Tomek. Elizabeth chronicled her incredible survival and triumph over adversity in a book titled To Live Fighting for Life on the Killer Mountain. Her story serves as an inspiration the loss of Tomek Moscovich was a devastating tragedy. Both climbers demonstrated exceptional courage, determination and friendship in the unwavering pursuit of their passion for high-altitude climbing. The tragedy, though, serves as a solemn reminder of the importance of preparedness, knowing our limits and respecting the power of Mother Nature. If you like this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and make sure to hit the bell icon so that you will always get the very latest from 